Hi, and welcome back to Simple Home and School. Today I'm going to show you Memoria Press's second grade literature program. These are all the literature guides that you use for the second grade program. And this is the order you use them in. Prairie School, Animal Folktales of America, which is just a collection of different folktales. Here's a few. Courage of Sarah Noble, Little House in the Big Woods, and The Tales of Beatrix Potter. Now, we decided that we're going to do a Little House on the Prairie um, study of several of the books in the row. So we did Beatrix Potter, and we'll do Little House on the Prairie last. Now, my daughter cruised through these. We ended up doing one chapter a day of each of the books, and we... Are, this is supposed to last you a whole school year, and we are already on our last literature guide. So I actually am happy about that because I think we have met her um, comprehension level. Um, we're about to start Little House in the Big Woods, and reading-wise, I think she's going to be able to read the book very well, but comprehension-wise, I think we've met the level where um, she needs to be where it's a little bit more difficult. We need to talk things out for her to understand um, some of the questions and more of the inferencing and um, just more complex, higher order thinking. So I'm excited about that. And I will talk to you in another, another video what we'll be doing for the rest of the school year since we already finished our whole literature program. Um, so what I like to do, since I have several children, and I love Memoria Press. I want to use their um, literature over and over again. And um, sometimes they update it and do um, new additions. So I'd have the teacher guide, but the student guide would be written in. So what I do is for the student guide, my daughter, you know, um, will look at this at the same time but she writes her answers in a composition notebook so we can reuse the student guide every year. And then my last child, I will let them write in the workbooks to use them up. So you can purchase a, excuse me, you can purchase a digital um, lesson plan with the literature guides or you can purchase um, like a printed one that they print is what I did. I think it's about eight or nine dollars on their website, or you can get it from rainbowresource.com. And let's just take a quick look at the literature guide. It tells you how to teach the program. Um, and this is just kind of what it looks like. I'll come in a little bit closer. So this is like what you would do on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So these were each chapter was taking two or three days typically to do, and my daughter was doing each chapter in one day because it was just easy, it was quick, so I decided to just, I wanted to stay at her level and move on. So I didn't end up really needing this, but I this would be very helpful and very useful, and I highly recommend getting it if your reader is on level comprehension and fluency wise um, and it'd be great to just follow their guide and it'll take you I believe all the way up to 36 weeks oh 33 weeks so then you'd have three more weeks typically for most states up to 36 weeks you could do a fun read or read other Beatrix Potter books because she has some great stories that are fun so I just wanted to show you the progression of the uh, literature guides in second grade and their difficulty once you get towards the end, just so you can kind of see uh, what that looks like and just to set your expectations for your student. So the teacher guide and the student guide look exactly the same. I'm sorry I don't flip the camera around ever. I haven't figured out how to edit yet, so I have to do everything in one shot. So uh, sorry if things are a little bit shaky. So here's the first book that you read in second grade. It's called Prairie School, and it's a story about a, a boy and his parents that live on a prairie, and the aunt comes out to teach the boy how to read because the parents never knew how to read. So it's a great little story. It was a fun read, and 
uh, we really enjoyed it. So in the teacher's guide, it will give you some phonics practice. In first grade for Memorial Press, they have you doing the score, core skills phonics books, which I showed in my um, curriculum video in the beginning of the year. Uh, we still use those. We use the core skill phonics third grade. Um, so I'm going to keep doing those every year. But these are um, the phonics practice that you do in the beginning of the chapter. I did this for the first three uh, literature guides. And then once I got to Beatrix Potter, I stopped doing it because my daughter can um, read and doesn't really need that much phonics practice. So what we're doing is at the beginning of before you read the chapter, you pronounce and saying, you do vocab, and I have, I forgot to pull out the uh, second grade memorial press, press dictionary you can get with the literature books. So you're going over these. I try to work with my daughter. Um, I ask, say the word, we read the sentence, and we try to figure out what the word means in context with the sentence before we look it up. Um, and if we can't, fi if she can't figure it out and we talk it out and she can't figure it out, then she looks up in the dictionary. I think this is a great skill just to read into sentences to figure out what things mean. And then how we do it or how we have done it since things have been really easy is then she reads the chapter, but we sit down and I read like the left page. She will read the right page. And then we go over the comprehension questions all together and I let her use the book to look things up and then I have her sit down and I have her answer the questions in her comprehension book. And then um, before she sits down and does the questions in her comprehension book, then we go over the discussion questions and then she writes her answers in her comprehension book. So that's kind of what every day looks like. Your vocab, your pronounce and say then read, comprehension questions, and discussion questions. So the level of difficulty stays the same throughout this book. I wouldn't say it gets any more difficult. So let's jump over to the animal folktales. This has a bunch of folktales. I love that they put in just this kind of fantasy, uh, you know, fiction about the United States because we've heard these stories and other... Um, books in our history books before so it's fun to read them in our reading literature they have really great pictures they're very colorful this is a really big book if you can't tell <coughs> excuse me so that's a book and let's look at the student guide okay this one's 14 chapters so remember if you're doing two or three days per chapter that would take 28 days plus. So kind of the same format. The pronounce and spell, the vocab, the comprehension questions. And then in the teacher's guide, we still have the phonics practice in the beginning. And this stays the same throughout the book. They have them writing a poem at the end. And that's it. Okay, let's move on and look at The Courage of Sarah Nova. I don't have the student guide um, for this book. We really liked this book. This book was about a little girl and her father that traveled up the East Coast because they bought a plot of land to live on. And the daughter had to go up with her father without any of the rest of the family. And um, just about how she had to keep her courage with all the things that they experienced on the trip. It was a very sweet story. We really liked that one. There was things that I um, found a little bit inappropriate in the beginning, but we just had to talk through that, and it was fine. I would say this book started um, comprehension-wise. It was a, a little bit more difficult than the first two, which makes sense because... We are progressing to get a little bit more difficult. So we still have the phonics practice in the beginning of the book. Then we move into our pronounce and spell, vocabulary, discussion questions, 
There's more discussion questions and comprehension questions. I meant comprehension questions. There's more of them. And then here's our, well, they'll have an activity or discussion questions at the end. More vocabulary than before. More comprehension questions. So we're up to six. And we were only doing, I think, about three or four before. Now we were doing four. So you can see, and then this is, they do these kind of every couple chapters, um, just these comprehension activities. Um, so this is what it looks like. There, you're noticing more key details and you're illustrating it with scene and they do this every couple chapters now, which was fun to do. Here we go, now we're up to seven comprehension questions. And let's get to the end of the book. We still have our phonics practice. And we end at about seven comprehension questions. So that's increasing your time every day that you're spending on comprehension. And then we have our end of the book comprehension activity, studying the characters, illustrating a scene. And I also want to show you the book, just the font starts getting smaller. There's a lot more reading on each page. So when we read, like I said, I'd like read the, I would read the left page. My daughter would read the right page. There's a couple pictures each chapter in this book still. All right, let's move on to Little House in the Prairie, in the Big Woods. Like I said, we're doing this one last, and I'll tell you why in another video. Um, but let's take a quick look through it. Each chapter is um, split up into two days or two parts. Here's our pronounce and spell vocabulary, activity, and our comprehension. And I'll, we did something different with Beatrix Potter because the chapters were a lot longer and the comprehension was a lot longer. So I'll talk to you about that when I get to that book and I'll do the same for this book. But you can see things are definitely getting more difficult for your child. There's a lot more writing work to do. So what I end up usually doing is if there's you know, six comprehension questions, since we do talk about all of them and go over them all, I make my daughter only write maybe four of them or five of them, depending on how much writing that we're doing that day. If we don't end up doing a lot of writing that day, I only will make her do, um, all of them. Yeah, I'll make her do all of them if we don't do a lot of writing. And then this is a enrichment activity at the end of the book. Okay. And then let's look at Beatrix Potter. Oh, I bought my daughter this off of the eBay. The box is kind of chewed up, but I bought her this set for 20 bucks off of eBay. And I found this at the thrift store. I know you can get them at the library, but I love the stories. I think they're great. Um, this is just one of the like storybook treasuries that has a lot of the books in them. So let's take a look at this. So how we did this, since the chapter started to get a lot longer, was we would do the pronounce and say, the vocabulary. We would read our story and the stories were about usually about 10 pages and again I would read the left she would read the right so we'd each read about five pages and then we would do four comprehension questions the first day and then she would write all of her answers and then the next day we would read the story again for fluency and then we would do the last couple comprehension questions and then in this book there was also a, another activity for the day on the next page 
there is the language lesson. So we would do the language lesson. We would do the life lesson and the activity. And I loved this. I thought this really tied in what you were reading all together because you're really dissecting the book. You're really getting into the nitty gritty of what you were reading. So here we're focusing on the author, the illustrator, the characters, and the plot. And then over here, you're doing those higher order thinking questions. So this is comparing and contrasting. Um, and then here's an activity about drawing and labeling um, things from what we read. So let's look at another one of those. So here is, you know, another chapter or another story. Here's our language lesson for the story. So grammar lesson, our life lesson for the story and our activity for the story. And they do that for each chapter, or I mean, sorry, each book that you read from the Beatrix Potter story. So your lesson, so like I said, we would do day one. Day one, we would go to question four, and then day two, I'd reread it, five, six, seven, and then we do our language lesson, our activity, and our life lesson. So that's it for Memoria Press second grade. If you have any questions, let me know. I love the program. I know I don't do it the proper way um, that is laid out in the lesson plans and how it is laid out in the books of how you're supposed to do it. But since my daughter was reading so quickly and this was so easily we really had to adapt it to what was best for us i followed their first grade program to a t and did every single thing um that i was supposed to do in the right order um so i just had to speed things up this year to what make it work for us so if you have any questions or want to see anything else with memoria press second grade lit guides let me know in the comments thanks for watching bye